Hello everyone. Today we will be discussing about cloud architecture for Internet of Things. So here are the learning outcomes. By the end of this session, students will be able to define the cloud architecture for Internet of Things. Uh, at the same time, they are going to keep in mind like what are the underlying hardware and software issues. So that's all what we are going to discuss. So here is the outline. I'll be introducing you first with the definitions of IoT and later I'll be taking you through the architecture and what are the major uh, architectural rules and standards that are followed in today's market. And then I'm going to end the session by uh, taking you through the benefits of IoT. So to begin with, uh, let's uh, talk about the definition of IoT, like what could be an Internet of Things. Uh, so here, as you can see, uh, we have an image uh, that I have picked up from Wikipedia. It is showing that we have, so as you can see here, we have uh, an image uh, that I have picked up from Wikipedia. So it shows a small world where uh, there are a couple of devices connected through internet or maybe a different ma means of communication. So here, as you can see, there are certain users. Here, as, uh, here we have a small user uh, who is trying to track his fitness. Uh, maybe it is uh, connected through a fitness band and through his cell phone and connected to the internet. Likely, we also have a small door lock, uh, which uh, uh, you can consider being connected through the Bluetooth to maybe some smart device like a cell phone or some home automation system, which is in turn again connected to internet. So whichever application you actually consider, like it could be a complete home automation system as you're able to see in the diagram or it would be a complete uh, internet based system altogether. So what I mean to say here is, so as per the definition of Internet of Things is concerned, the Internet of Things is the network of devices, vehicles, home appliances that contain electronics, software, actuators and connectivity, which allows these things to connect, interact and exchange data. So if you look keenly at this definition, you will easily identify that the major things that we need to focus on is it involves electronics. And of course, whenever you have an electronic system, it, it has to be uh, imparted along with some sort of software or sometimes which we refer as a firmware. So what the software does is software is going to uh, instruct this particular electronic chip or it would be a controller or microprocessor or whatever. So the major things here we need to focus is we have an electronic system, we also have a software, and then as an outcome, we need to see some action uh, being performed by the actuators. So in this definition, I'm focusing on these three things. So what happens is we are going to select certain some electronic uh, system uh, in which we are going to write some sort of software, as you can see here, and this electronic chip uh, uh, which has an inbuilt software uh, which is uh, going to actually build or impart the intelligence into this embedded system is going to make some actions being taken across the output. So it would be like turning on a light bulb or turning off a light bulb or turning on your air conditioning unit based on the temperature. It could be anything uh, like this. So to begin with uh, the definition, uh, if you are able to see on the screen, uh, I have focused a small uh, diagram which says wireless sensor network. The reason why we need to discuss about wireless sensor network here is that uh, inside this particular oval, as you're able to see, we have a couple of sensors. So each and every node or the circle which you're able to see inside this oval is nothing but uh, it is representing a small sensor. Now, if you focus on this black dot, this target node is connected to this one, the third sensor again, and third sensor in turn is connected to the fourth sensor. I mean, the red line which I have just now directed is also showing you the flow of the data, how it is actually being transited from the target uh, sensor to the internet. So here is where we have the internet. I am trying to force the data that is being sensed by this target node here through all these three remaining nodes and then that goes to the triangle. So uh, this triangle is simply representing a, a sort of a sync node or sometimes we call it as a gateway. So let, let us call this a gateway. Okay. So 
the sensor from the first one which is trying to sense maybe let us say we are trying to sense a temperature so the target node sensor is actually trying to sense the temperature then it is passing on the data to the upcoming nodes because there is no direct communication from the tar target sensor to the gateway and the gateway is going to take care of sending the data to the internet so when we properly talk about the internet of things i mean uh, when we are trying to simply understand what the iot is and what kind of architecture it might be having unlike your wireless sensor networks what would be the basic difference between iot and wireless sensor networks then only one thing comes to our mind that is this uh, complete architecture can be uh, distributed into three or four sections so the first section is the user layer as you can see here which which sometimes we call as the edge computing node or the node level kind of computation the second level is uh, the gateway so from this point to this point we say that the gateway or controllers are going to take care i mean these are the secondary devices uh, in our iot layer whereas the third layer this complete layer is going to be uh, relying on your internet so called so I, i'll be demonstrating it with an e as you can see the first is user layer or the node layer so here uh, as you can see you have a couple of iot users then in the second layer you have physical entity like it would be a sensor for example let us say that i'm uh, measuring the temperature of this particular room i have a sensor in my hand and i am the user so i am actually residing in this user layer later on i have the sensor which comes in the gateway section so there are two possibilities either my sensor can directly sense the data and it is going to send it to a device maybe like a smartphone uh, where uh, my sensed data is being transferred to this particular uh, cell phone through bluetooth then the data that i am receiving in my smartphone is being transferred either directly to the internet so this is possible way number 1 whereas the second possibility is transfer the data to the gateway and gateway is going to take care of sending the data to the internet uh, section so these are the two possible ways and also you, as you can see here sometimes uh, we prefer to use this peer cloud what do you mean by peer cloud peer, peer cloud is nothing but for example if i'm uh, having a sensor as i said and if i have a smartphone along with smartphone if i uh, if i prefer to actually maintain my own local catalog or registry of uh, uh, maintaining all the logs of my of past year or maybe past 100 readings so in such a situation i am going to actually maintain my own database server in my room so that the sensor is going to communicate the data to my cell phone and cell phone is going to communicate the data or pass it pass my data to my own server so what happens here is i am maintaining my own cloud and my cloud will be copied down on the internet server so sometimes we have some uh, backup copies like maybe google drive or google sync uh, by means of which the local maintained copy uh, in cases where i don't have any uh, uh, maybe connectivity with the internet then this data can be uh, completely stored without any uh, any sort of losing of the data on my local server and whenever i get access to the internet i am going to directly take that data and get it synced over my cloud so this is all how uh, the things work till the gateway layer whereas if you focus on the third layer you can easily see that there is some sort of authentication being done so this part is actually about authentication so generally what happens on the cloud is um, uh, it's not possible that any random person is coming uh, to my place and he is he's he's putting his sensors into my room and he is saying that i want to sense the data and want to send it to my cloud so unlike uh, unlike a random approach what we can prefer is i'm going to put some sort of authentication like whenever user comes to me and he says that i have so and so sensor and i want to uh, i want my sensor to be sensing some data and sending it to my cloud then no problem as long as he is putting the sensors for sensing i don't have any problem but whenever he is trying to put that the same data onto the cloud some authentication is completely required the main reason is if every person is trying to sense the data and pump it onto the internet or maybe to the cloud server then probably it is going to be uh, choked up in a very uh, less amount of time
based on this particular uh, architecture that we have seen in the previous slide, we can simply write down a small equation for IoT, which says that Internet of Things is nothing but it is uh, a composition of physical objects along with some sort of controllers, sensors and actuators which are going to either uh, decide when I need to connect to internet, what data is to be smoothed out, when I need to send it to the internet, plus some sort of internet. So this uh, concludes that the internet is nothing but it's a composition of these three core things where we have some sort of physical objects like sensors and we add some sort of intelligence by uh, putting or embedding the, those sensors with some sort of controllers wherein which we write the firmware and the decisions to be uh, made by the actuators and ultimately of course uh, we need this internet and these are the primary benefits of IoT. Uh, IoT if you implement in your organization or maybe in your system it is going to uh, definitely improve uh, the business opportunities like reaching the world very easily, some sort of home automation, the processes are going to be more efficient all your assets uh, which were at some sort of time being managed by some uh, human resource now that can be automated and because of which you can say that um, the assets are also enhanced in terms of its utilization and of course you can improve the safety and security by adding few features like home automation and other stuff in your uh, home security system it is also going to increase the productivity and also cost saving so that's all about uh, the benefits of IoT. We will discuss about how to use API in the next lecture and these are the references that I have used. Thank you.